The topic of this training session is Montreal Cognitive Assessment, MOCA, Administration and Scoring. The objectives are to learn how to administer the MOCA and to understand the scoring procedures and how to interpret a patient's performance on the tool and also to practice scoring a sample patient's exam. Before we start, it would be helpful if you had in front of you both a copy of the MOCA form as well as the instructions. You can download both at the website shown on the page. It's also helpful if you have already viewed the MOCA video with patient Sam and tried to score his MOCA on your own because we will go through that a little bit later. This is a screenshot of what the instrument looks like. Before administering the MOCA, you want to make sure that you have a patient's full attention, that you're speaking clearly and in a reasonable enough volume so that hearing confounds do not become an issue. Make sure before you start that you record the date, the patient's age, and level of education at the top of the form because you'll need that information later when it comes to scoring. We'll talk a little bit about administration and scoring of the MOCA. The MOCA is one of the most sensitive, but also one of the more technical screening instruments to administer. The instructions are very nuanced, and so it's important to read through them carefully before actually trying to administer the screen with a patient. You'll need to know which items can be repeated and how questions should be phrased because this is important for some of the items. Again, the MOCA instructions are very clear and very exacting, and therefore, I'm only going to highlight a few administration issues on some of the items. Question number one is about trail making. That is, the patient has to alternate back and forth between numbers and letters. Note that if a patient self-corrects an error and recognizes the error and changes course, you can give them full credit. However, uncorrected mistakes of any kind are scored zero points. Question number three is a clock drawing task. It's important to keep in mind here that the scoring of this clock is broken up into three separate components, each of which is awarded one point. Give patients the benefit of the doubt for the contour or the shape of the circle. This is because in clinical experience, when many patients draw a circle, they do so rather hastily. Note also that the hour hand must be shorter than the minute hand. On other instruments like the minicog, the length of the hands does not matter, but for the mocha, the hand length is incorporated into scoring. For the word list on question number five, this portion is not scored. All you're doing here is just allowing the patient to register and repeat back the words to you. After the patient has successfully repeated the list two times, do not forget to say that you will ask for those same words again a little later. Question number six involves digit span. Make sure that you say each number separately, as in two, one, eight, and say each number approximately one second apart. The administration of question number seven is a little tricky because you need to both fluidly say a string of long letters and also at the same time keep track of when the patient is responding or tapping to all the letter A's. Make sure that you're positioning the patient's hand closely enough to you so that you can see their hand in your peripheral vision while you're reading the letters. Once you begin reciting the letters, do not stop. Make sure the presentation is continuous and fluid without pausing. For question number 10, which is word recall, you may not need to do the optional items on this subtest involving cueing when you're giving the patient reminders. Only words spontaneously recalled without cues are actually scored and given credit, and it's only that portion of question number 10 that contributes to the total score. The last section of the MOCA, question 11, is regarding orientation. All responses here must be exact to get credit. For example, if a patient is one or two days off on the date or day of the week, those responses would receive zero points. At the end of administration, Add up all of the items carefully. Double check your addition. Make sure that you add one extra point for patients with a high school education or less. This is how this instrument accounts for educational differences that can impact performance. 
This is something that can be easily overlooked and can make the difference between a passing or a failing score. So try to remember that educational component at the very end. A passing score on the instrument is a score of 26 or higher. The MOCA is scored out of a possible 30 points. A failure is a score of 25 or less. Hopefully you have already seen the patient, Sam, completing the MOCA and tried to score his performance yourself. We will now review his performance and score the instrument together. For the first couple of items, Sam performed them correctly. He was able to do the alternating back and forth between numbers and letters appropriately and also did reasonably well on the cube copy. This is a screenshot of Sam's clock. Note that like many patients, Sam was a little bit hasty in drawing the circle and did not fully close the circle at the top. I, in this case, would give Sam the benefit of the doubt for generally creating the circle appropriately and award one point for contour. Sam also has all the numbers in their correct location with no duplicate numbers, so he receives another point for the number scoring. With regard to the hands, you'll know that instead of placing the hands at 10 past 11, Sam has drawn one hand to the 10 and one to the 11. This is a more concrete performance and for that section would receive zero points. That means that Sam's total points for the clock draw are two out of three points. For animal naming, Sam was able to name correctly all of the animals shown on the page, so he gets full credit for that. He was also able to appropriately repeat the list of five words on both trials. For the first component of the attention subtest, where Sam was repeating numbers, he successfully completed both of those correctly and so also receives full credit two out of two points. During the hand tapping portion, Sam made several mistakes along the way in response to A's that were said by the examiner. Because he made two or more errors, he received zero points for this portion of the test. The next question was about serial sevens. You'll notice that Sam got some of these correct, but others wrong. Therefore, he was able to correctly subtract seven two times, which corresponds to a score of two out of three. And you can see underneath the numbers, there are instructions about how to score this section. Under language, Sam was able to repeat both sen sentences correctly, so receives two out of two points. When he was asked to name words in one minute that begin with letter F, he was able to name more than 11, and so receives a full credit one point. And for abstraction, for the first item, train and bicycle, Sam struggled a little bit. His answer related to wheels that operate in the same way or have elbows. And that's considered a more concrete response. The MOCA instructions detail out a little bit more specifically uh, what is a good response or a bad response. For that item, the train and bicycle, Sam did not receive full credit. But he did answer appropriately when asked about the similarity between a watch and a ruler. So he receives one out of a total two points in that section. When Sam was asked to remember the words that were given to him earlier, unfortunately he was not able to remember any of the words and so re received zero points. For the last section, orientation, Sam was able to answer all of those questions correctly and so received six points. When all of these subcomponents are added together, Sam's total score on the MOCA is 21 over 30. Adding an extra point is not necessary because Sam has more than a high school education, so his total score is 21 points. The Act on Alzheimer's website has many provider tools that simplify the screening process and also provide simple instructions for what to do when patients pass and fail the screen. For more information to download these free tools, please visit the Act on Alzheimer's website at the link provided, or you can also contact Act on Alzheimer's staff using the information on the slide below.